Hello and welcome to Around the Clock. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves. Today I am speaking with Nancy Cantor. Nancy, welcome to Around the Clock. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Nancy has two businesses, Cantor Consulting and Dream Factory Community. Before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in Ashland, and a few other things. Okay. So I've been in Ashland, I think it's 25 years. Okay. Uh, I used to live in the Arlington area, and oh, okay. when I was looking to buy, um, my stepkids lived in Ashland, so we oh. came out here to look for property. Okay. And we found our house it was the first house we looked at on Tri Street. And oh, okay. I was amazed compared to what I could buy in Arlington and what I could get here at that yes. in 1997. Okay. Was amazing. Yes. So we got the house. We live at 27 Tri Street. Very nice. No, very nice. Good. Uh, Cantor Consulting, what is that business? Okay, so I started that in 2000 and, ooh, no, 1994. Okay. I used to work for a company called Landmark Education. Yep. And I was a manager for them, and I also led a program for them, Self-Expression Leadership. So I knew a lot of people there. I also represented their wisdom course. So I had a lot of connections there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got married during that time. I had a son. And so I stepped down working there full time, and I was looking at what could I do. So I, the first thing I did is I did a project with them. I represented the wisdom course. But then they would always lay me off after I successfully filled the course, <laughs> right? No good deed goes on. Right. Oh, that's too bad. That's so hard. So at one point I said to my friend in New York, I said, you know, I really got to go back to work. And he said, why don't you become a consultant? I said, well, what do consultants do? <laughs> I, I needed to know Anything that. you want them to do, I think. Well, he gave me kind of a coaching, you know, model that he used. He lived mm -hmm. in New York City, and he gave me his pricing structure. And right at that time, somebody, when I was closing things down at Landmark um, to take my time off, somebody approached me, and she was referred to me oh. by somebody I'd coached while I was on staff there. And so she hired me, and as soon as she hired me, I realized, ooh, this, and he told me what to charge, which right. was a lot more than I would have thought of charging. Right, right. And so I ended up reaching out to people I knew who I'd had in programs or I mm -hmm. knew through, they, I had a lot of volunteers who worked for mm -hmm. me. And my second month, I had six clients. Wow. So I was pretty excited about this opportunity. I had a phone. Yep. They called me. I had no cards, no brochure. And people just knew of me and they knew my talents because I had been exercising them when I had my job. And what kind of consulting do you do, Nancy? Well, I would say at the beginning, I would consult on anything, like okay. anything they wanted. Of course, if you want to go beyond where you are, like in sales, mm -hmm. you know, I work with some consultants. I work with somebody who wanted to have a breakthrough around relationship, you know, somebody in business who wanted to bring the business to the next level, couples that work together. But then I realized the piece that I really enjoyed and felt like I was really good at is the business and the entrepreneurial thinking. Mm. Those were my skill sets. So oh, interesting. I start, for a while, I call my business the art of fulfilling work. And I help people on all different aspects wow. of getting work that they love, right livelihood, mm -hmm. and also business development. Wow, that's great. And how did that lead you to your Dream Factory community? And what is the Dream Factory community? Okay, so I'll try to answer those two things together. Okay. So in 2003, I did a couple of things. A friend of mine had, I'd always wanted to go to Finhorn, Scotland, which is a spiritual community. And at that point, I was helping people use Carolyn Mace's materials. She wrote a book called Sacred Contracts. So I was leading salons on sacred contracts. Like, what's your divine purpose? I mean, that's okay. a simple way of saying it. So that was one of the things I did before people started working on their businesses. So a friend of mine who I met through Business Network International, BNI, and yep. sent me an email saying that Carolyn Mace was teaching at Finhorn and I, on sacred contracts. And I said, oh, I've always wanted to go. And she's teaching something on sacred contracts, which right. I was already working with. So I signed up for that workshop. The other thing, so I did that at the very end of 2003. Okay. 2004, I met with a friend of mine, and she was doing work in Ecuador. And we met one day, you know, we were a part of a group, and nobody else showed up except for me and her, which was so hmm. unusual. We yeah. were called Women of Power. And we brought out the whiteboard, and we started creating, and we came up with this idea of 
uh, dream beyond the dream. If you want to create, if you want to live your dreams, help other people live theirs. So that's what we wow, called it. What a great it. idea! It was a great idea, and it was to work with women entrepreneurs in Ecuador. And she'd already been on a trip there and identified groups of women that we could work with. So I helped her fill the trip. There was nine of us that ended up going. So in a very short time, I was at Finhorn, Scotland, studying sacred contracts, came home, and then I went to Ecuador. And so between those two trips, I literally had a dream. And in the dream, I was answering the phone saying, Dream Factory. That was it. Oh, wow. So it made me think, okay, I've been given this title, you know, this mm -hmm. name. Yeah. And because the two places that I went, Finhorn is very communal, and the rainforest was very communal, how people mm -hmm. work together. So I decided in order to live your dreams, community is a very big part of you living yeah. your dreams. That's true. So that gave me the direction of what it was. I already had clients, so I told them they had to join. <laughs> you have to join it. And they went, what is it? I said, I don't know yet. You know, so people started to join. But the focus was, you know, to be supported in living your dreams. And it evolved. You know, mm -hmm. and then I realized I had to alter my curriculum because I had a curriculum, Successful Entrepreneur Workshop, mm -hmm. and then I had a, a six-month group that I had designed called Designing for Success. So the two worked nicely together for business development, but I felt like with the Dream Factory, there was something new coming along. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did is I said I have to redesign. And, you know, I could still work with entrepreneurs, but the Dream Factory, like everything I was doing, I was doing women in business luncheons, so they became the Dream Factory gathering. Okay. Or I call them the Dream Factory luncheons at that point. Mm -hmm. They're called the gathering now because we right. don't eat because it's all online. Right. But we, I trans, translated that into Dream Factory luncheons, and then I created a workshop called Chief Dream Officer Training. So rather than training CEOs, I'm training CDOs. Okay. And the whole point is to give women, and I focused on women because mm -hmm. I was already focused on women with yeah. the other stuff yeah. I was doing. Um, and it really is about taking on your life, your work, a proactive approach to taking on your life, your work, and your world. Wow. And it's an empowerment community for women. Okay. And I've been running it since 2004. So we're in about our 18th year. And about how many women do you think you've helped or have gone through your, your program with you? I mean, that's a really great, thousands, I'd have to say. Wow. Thousands of people have gone through the program. Some, you know, I have some members that have been there pretty much from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I have other people that have been there through half the journey. And I have brand new people that are there. And some people are there for a year. And some people there are for 16, 17 years. And what is the driving factor, you think, that brings women to come and work with you? Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> we should ask them. Uh, I think I think I do walk my talk mm -hmm. when I say I give people. I teach a proactive approach. I'm very proactive in my own life, mm -hmm. and I have a long history of supporting women in this area. I've started women focused programming in three different chambers of commerce. Mm -hmm. I've had my business since 2000 and uh, well, 1994 is when I started Cantor Consulting and the Dream Factory for 18 years. So I've got a long track record mm -hmm. of what I've done. Now, let me just give our, our viewers a little, a little uh, background. So I'm on, a con I'm on a board of the Metro West Conference for Women, mm -hmm. and Nancy and I saw each other there, and that's where this conversation started. And as I think back to my years, not what I do now, because it's a little bit different, but when I was working in corporate and there wasn't a lot of support for women. If anything, the company that I was working for, everyone was so proud of the VP when she had her baby in the morning and then she was doing a meeting from her delivery bed in the afternoon. Mm. And I feel like it has changed for women as to not necessarily that you can't have everything, but you can do it differently. Have you found that as you have gone through? I mean, you've been doing it for 18 years. Well, I think it's interesting. I think with women, you know, like way back when, mm -hmm. it's like how you can be more masculine. Right. And be successful in a man's world. Right. And what if it wasn't that? What if women actually looked at what's a feminine approach for being successful? Mm -hmm. And that could look 
look very different at different times in a woman's life. Right. And I think there's something about respecting that. You know, like, mm. how do you respect what you're in? I know there's cultural influences, and you can't ignore right. cultural influences. But I think there's something about giving... I mean, it's it could be for men and women. I just tend to focus on women just right. because it's a dream factory community, and men always say, oh, men will never join a dream factory <laughs> community. But I've... I've applied my work in corporations. I did a mm -hmm. two-year project at Fidelity with men and women, and mm -hmm. I've used a curriculum that I use in the Dream Factory. Nice. I don't nice. talk about it right. like that, right. but I've done one for Thermo Fisher. I did for sales people, a team of sales people, and we called it, uh, you know, rather than CDO, like, uh, chief dream officer, we call the chief results officer. Mm, so you can change the verbiage. Right. But the point is, it's like allowing a person to actually say, what are you, your unique gifts and how do you want to offer them to the world? Which is a very different conversation, I think, particularly with women who spend yeah. the majority of their life wondering and hoping that they can satisfy, satisfy everybody else's needs and wants, yes. that it's a little <laughs> different training to say, well, what do you need? What do you want? Right. What do you think's unique about you? What would your dream be? Whether it's you know regarding their life, their work, or their world, you know, wow. it could be a little shift for people. And I find the more that I lead what I call the CDO training, chief dream mm -hmm. officer training, and I do it for men too. Right. There are wake up calls. Yeah. You know, I did one for uh, Drake Beeman Mourn. And they do downsizing, you know, when people are laid off right. in corporations. And I had a man who, who was an Asian man who did it. And we did a guided visualization. He said, oh, you know, he came out of it and said, I want to teach math in yeah. middle school. <laughs> he goes, I want to teach mid middle school math. This is so not what my culture would say because he had a, a very high-end corporate right. job. Right, You know, so it wouldn't be like the natural thing. It's like, I think I'll leave my high-end corporate job and teach middle school math. Wow. Not that there's anything wrong with no, that. No, but it's a very different approach and, and certainly salary and, and yeah, prestige would, almost too, right? Teachers are not looked at I mean, it's amazing what teachers do when they're just not as highly regarded as someone who works in a high corporate position. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, but I thought it was very interesting doing this program for that kind of person who's being laid off that they actually started to see that being laid off after 25, 30 years, yeah. which is pretty dramatic. Yeah. Like once you could adjust to that. Right. They started to see it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Right. There right. could be some opportunities. And I think that's a lot of what I help people to see. That whatever happens, I mean, it could be a, you could say it's a big disaster. Mm -hmm. And you can be the victim of the big disaster. Or you could start to look to see as changes come, and changes do come. I right. mean, we've just been through a, a, a very, very big, big change. change. Yeah. That you can start to find the opportunities in that. And, you know, through my coaching, through Cantor Consulting, and the work that I do through the Dream Factory, I think that's a big piece of what I help people to see, and I think I mo and I model that for yeah. people. And if someone wanted to, you know, join your either Dream Factory community or reach out in regards to Cantor Consulting, how would they find you? CantorConsulting.com. Okay. C A N T O R. R. Okay. As if I was singing. Like I could <laughs> there be you go. Cantor, but I'm really not singing. <laughs> Please don't ask me to do that. And then the other thing is, um, as we started talking about this, you used to have a show here at WACA TV. I, did, I actually had two shows here. Wow. I used to have Dream Factory Community, Living Your Dreams. Okay. And I would interview a lot of my members who, you know, people do live their dreams out of going through the right, Dream Factory. Right, right. Very and nice. And so I would, and it was great because I used to do publicity packages. So mm -hmm. we would have luncheons every month. Uh-huh. And so they would speak, for, it was a coaching package that right. I did. They would speak for the luncheon, they'd get interviewed at the cable show. Yep. And then they would be featured in um, the newsletter that goes out every month. Wow! Yeah, you know, we have a nice. pretty robust list. Yeah. So it was a great way for members to get themselves out there. Very. You cool. know, sometimes when you have that kind of opportunity, you rise to the occasion. I said, right. well, you know, when when Channel Four News calls you, or you know, Fox <laughs> News is on the line, you'll know that you can be interviewed yeah. on a show and right. feel really comfortable about nice. that. Nice. I actually had one member who um, she did one of those. And she was a yoga teacher, and she was saying, I, I don't think I can speak unless I'm sitting in a circle on the ground with the, with the lights dimmed. 
and eyes closed. I said, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work for a TV show or the luncheon. No. And, and so, but she went through the publicity package, and as it turns out, she was voted she, to get the Be the Change Award for the Women's Conference in Boston. Wow. And she ended up speaking before 10,000 women live. That's amazing. And not only did she speak, she commanded their attention. Yeah. I don't know if you know Judy Chiavangelo, who started a nonprofit called Ben Speaks. I don't. I don't know She her. is an amazing person. She lost her son to suicide. Okay. And rather than being the victim of that, she has created an amazing nonprofit to help kids who wow. want to have a more proactive approach to living their lives. Wow. And you helped start that just I, by helping her. Well, I think having the Dream Factory and having that be available yeah. and the amount of support she got from the members of the Dream Factory right. and our programming right. made a huge difference for Judy. That's amazing. Oh, that must make you feel so good to know that you're helping women reach their dreams. Oh, absolutely. And there can be so many people that I could point to. And, yeah. I'm, and I think as I move forward with the Dream Factory, there's a couple things I want to do. Is I want to keep featuring my members more and more. Mm -hmm. Because what they're creating for themselves is very outstanding and worthy of note. Yeah. So I want to do more with that. The other piece is I might create a division that's a nonprofit because I'm starting to do some very interesting um, pro bono uh, projects. Like I'm doing one right now through the, in the Ivory Coast. Oh, wow. The women in the villages of the Ivory Coast, men marry, and they might have mm -hmm. five wives. Right. They only support the first wife and the kids wow. from that first marriage. So there's a woman who came to visit. Her daughter is living with one of my members of the Dream Factory, mm -hmm. Brenda Hedden, who's an amazing person. Yeah. And, her, and this woman's daughter is living with her. She just graduated from Clark, and she came to visit. And she wanted to visit me because she knew Aww. I did women's empowerment. So she, she speaks French. I speak a very little French. I used to take it in school. <laughs> but she knew she wanted to do this project in the Ivory Coast to help wow. the women in the villages. So luckily, I'm in Business Network International, and right. I spoke for a national webinar. And through that, somebody reached out to me who's a business consultant in California who's from Guadalupe originally. Wow. And she speaks fluent French. <gasps> she also focuses Perfect. on finances and used to work for banks and corporations. Mm -hmm. She's got a lot more of that background that I specific. I'm on personal growth. Right. She's about finances yeah. and, and very specific things. So the three of us have been meeting, and she's giving her, you know, like step by step, she got her nonprofit status. Right. The, and now they're analyzing this agricultural product that can be developed, and then it'll be tested for profitability. Wow. And this is a project that could go throughout the Ivory Coast. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. So it's got How me exciting. very excited because honestly, I think the more I do the work that I do, I realize it doesn't take too much mm -hmm. to make a big difference. Yeah. It really doesn't. Yeah. You know, just recently, the other thing that I'm doing is I've done the PN Mass Challenge for right. 24 years. Yep. And this year, because two members of my dream factory have ovarian cancer or had, one has mm -hmm. passed. I decided that would be something I really wanted to focus on. Yeah. So you can start a team and designate funds. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did this year. We are funding a very specific protocol for, and the woman we're funding, her name is Dr. Mita Lunas, mm -hmm. and she's the chief of gynecologic oncology at Dana-Farber. Wow. Where all the funding from the PMS right, Challenge right. goes. But we designate funds to her to this particular protocol. I also set up a fund at Dana-Farber in honor of the Dream Factory, because right. that's why I started it. Right. It's because I had two members in the Dream Factory called Dream Factory Community Ovarian Cancer Research Fund. Wow. And our PMC funds that. We, I have a promise. I made the promise. I have to own it for $100,000 over the next five years. Wow. We are already over 76000 Congratulations. In one year. We st I started this in February. Wow. So I know next year it will be com you that will promise definitely get will over be that. Complete. You will definitely make that. So it's another pro bono project. Right. That I keep looking at, you know, what is next with this? Because yeah. it really was amazing that having a project that called to so many people, and we had Channel 4 News cover it, mm -hmm. that, you know, through the PR company that yeah. works with Dana, with, that works with the PMC. Right, right. And it 
played on Channel 4 News several times. Nice. And then it was, it was, it was one of the featured clips on um, opening ceremonies for the Pan Mass Challenge well, on Friday. Uh, well, we're going to have to get back with you next year after the Pan Mass Challenge and see. I'm sure you will have made it over that 100000 Oh, we will totally make that. But I think there's a much bigger thing we will be working on. Okay. And I'm not sure what that is. And I think with both the projects, I really do feel like there's a future like we've only just be in those particular projects, mm -hmm. we've only just begun. So well, I'll fill you in. We'll keep filling us in and we'll keep sharing. Nancy, thank you so much for coming on Around the Clock. You and I have interacted in different ways for, for a number of years, so it's great to actually finally sit down and have a nice conversation and to bring you back to the studios. Well, it's great. It's great to be here. Good. Now, before I let you go, yes. there's a question I ask all first time guests to Around the Clock. Okay. Is there something about you, Nancy Cantor, that not many people may know that you'd be willing to share with our viewers? I don't know why I think of this, but I, I went to UMass Amherst. Yay, me too. And I, um, <laughs> and I took some time off and then I went back. And when I went okay. back, I was very entrepreneurial. I worked on campus, I had three jobs on campus. And one of them was I was assistant treasurer for the student senate. I represented commuters. Oh wow! And I was assistant treasurer, and we had an over million dollar budget. Oh, for the student center, yeah. For the student senate, and I worked on that. And oh, I, did you say the senate or the center? No, the student senate. senate. Wow. So I was a student senate representative for commuters because okay. I lived off campus. Yep. And I was the assistant treasurer. And so I worked with the budgeting committee and I mm -hmm. worked with all the, the clubs. Great. We had a very large budget and I learned a lot about finances from doing that. Well, it's amazing what we learn in college that we then bring forward in our lives. Exactly. It was great. And I actually even got paid for it. I don't, I, I'd be embarrassed <laughs> to say what I got paid. It was not a lot. No. <laughs> but it was a very cool job because, you know, it definitely Fine. something you could bring forward. Yeah. But how you would analyze things and make decisions about things. It was very clear how you do it. Yeah. And uh, I felt very enlightened and educated. Good. Well, Nancy, thank you for sharing that. And go UMass. Yes. Um, thanks for coming on Around the Clock. Uh, that wraps up this interview with Nancy Cantor of Cantor Consulting and the Dream Factory Community.